Welcome to another edition of Ask Isaiah. It's your host, Isaiah Rhodes. And I just want to give you forewarning. My bracket for the 2018 NCAA tournament is disgusting. We're going to get to UMBC and how they became the first 16 seed to defeat a number one seed in NCAA history. But before I get into that, I want to let you know when my bracket was completely destroyed. On Friday, when the Buffalo Bulls completely obliterated Arizona, 89 to 68. Now, this is an Arizona team that was coming off a tumultuous season. A lot had to do with their coach, Sean Miller, and their high-priced recruit, DeAndre Ayton, who declared for the NBA draft after uh, after this weekend. He'll probably be in contention for the number one pick in the, um, the NBA lottery. But when you consider everything that went on in Arizona and the fact that they were able to come back and salvage the season by winning the Pac-12 tournament. DeAndre Aiden played out of his mind, combining for 64 points in the semifinal and championship games, respectively, to come into this game against a 13 seed when many, including myself, had them advancing as far. I had them going to the Elite Eight, but many had them going to the Final Four and championship. We consider all that to lay an egg completely, especially in the second half. In the first half against the Bulls, it was 40 to 38, relatively close, but many considered the fact that they were the more talented team. I'll put that in quotations. Uh, being the more talented team, you would expect them to ratchet it up and really just, you know, put their stamp on the game and move on. In the second half, it was the complete opposite. The Bulls ratcheted it up. They hit 15 three-pointers in the game, really opening up the game. But there was a stretch in the second half where they held Arizona to just two field goals in an eight-minute stretch. And during that eight-minute stretch, the Bulls went on a 19-5 to run, really opening up the game. Now, I mentioned DeAndre Ayton and how his scoring prowess in the Pac-12 tournament really catapulted Arizona. In this particular game against Buffalo, he only scored 14 points and had 13 rebounds. This is 24th double-double of the season. So as an individual, he had a great season, but it didn't land Arizona where it needed to be. And when you consider everything that they went through in the season to reach the heights that they did with the Pac-12 tournament and to see the air just get popped out of the balloon so quickly, it has to be really deflating and disappointing. But that's what March Madness is. Everybody has a shot. And if you're honored with the opportunity to get within the field of 68 and just survive in advance, anybody has a chance. The seeding doesn't really matter. Whether you're a 1 or a 16, it doesn't matter. You have a shot. And we have to, we have to get into an extensive conversation about how UMBC completely, completely just flipped history on its head. UMBC has shocked the world. Many are comparing this upset of Virginia to Mike Tyson's defeat to Buster Douglas in 1990. This is that level of shocking to everybody. I mean, and I just went into a whole soliloquy about how when you get into the NCAA tournament, everybody has a shot. And all that being said, subconsciously, you don't really believe ever that 16th seed is going to beat number one because it just never, ever, ever, ever happens. It's never happened until 2018 when UMBC destroyed the Cavaliers. Now, the Cavaliers in general, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Virginia Cavaliers, right now they're just, they're just completely out of it right now. And when you have a team that was the number one overall seed in the tournament, they were 32, they were 31 and two coming into this tournament, number one in the country. They were playing the Retrievers and the Retrievers just just honestly completely dominated. They won the game 74 to 54. Now, we're going to get into the numbers. Virginia shot 39% on the season from three-point line. Against UMBC, they only made four. They shot four of 22. That's 18%. And they got out-rebounded 33 to 24. UMBC is only the third team this season to out-rebound Virginia. And UMBC was able to pull out the win. Those other two occurrences, Virginia didn't lose. Also, Virginia not only 
did they shoot four of 22 from three. They only went to the free throw line eight times, making four. Now, Jarius, Jarius Lyles from UNBC, he scored 28 points, shot nine of 11 from the field, seven of nine from the free throw line, and he moved into second all-time on the school scoring list with 1,739 points. So UNBC, even if they don't go on to win this NCAA championship, this win right here is not just for them. This is for the future. This is for any other 16 seed that goes up against an overpowering opponent. You have a shot. And not only did these two victories for Buffalo and UNBC uh, shock the NCAA, but they really forced all the top seeds to wake up, whether that be Villanova, Duke, and beyond. Every other number one seed, number two seed after that, really went on to win in dominating fashion. Just to give you some scores, um, I mentioned UNBC, Virginia, 74 to 54. Kansas State defeated Creighton, 69 to 59. So UNBC will play Kansas State. Uh, Kentucky defeated Davidson, 78 to 73. Kentucky will go on to play Buffalo. And Kentucky defeated Buffalo yesterday. So Kentucky moves on to the Sweet 16. Shocking many. And then we have to we have to speak on the other Cinderella story that's taken over the NCAA, Loyola Chicago. Loyola Chicago defeated Miami 64 to 62 on a game winning three. A game winning three with five seconds remaining from Dante Ingram. In that particular game, Miami had to leave for the majority of the game, but they just couldn't put Loyola Chicago away. And Loyola Chicago was able to hang around and put uh, Miami in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations, which should favor Miami because they get an opportunity to go to the line. But whenever you get in a one-on-one -on -one situation, a lot of times when you miss the front end, that goes into uh, the opposition's favor. And Miami missed a lot of free throws down the stretch. They turned over the ball, and that gave Loyola Chicago momentum, and they were able to steal the game. Dante Ingram with a game-winning three. Fast forward to Saturday, they played Tennessee. Now, Tennessee was a team that has been able to hold teams under uh, hold teams under 50% throughout the season. Loyola Chicago shot 50% against, against uh, Tennessee. Tennessee's first non-conference opponent to shoot 50%. They made 12 threes. And not only did they win the game yesterday against Tennessee, but this is a tw their 12th straight win in their 30th of the season, which is a team record. Now, an 11th seed, which well the Chicago is, an 11th seed has made the Sweet 16 in five consecutive, uh, five consecutive seasons in the NCAA tournament. So that just goes to show you that, as I said, anybody has a chance. So these, these Cinderella stories aren't Cinderella anymore. I mean, I think sometimes the, uh, the committee puts these seedings together, puts a team knowing that they have a shot to upset a potential, a potential uh, power ranking team. They see them in a certain way knowing that they could potentially upset somebody. But as I mentioned earlier, the seedings don't really matter. Once you're in, you have a shot. Let's go over the brackets some more. Uh, I mentioned Loyola, able to advance to the Sweet 16. Uh, Texas, Nevada. Nevada defeated Texas 87-83. to 83. Then uh, Tennessee uh, advanced against to Loyola, Chicago, but they, they beat Wright State in the first round 73-47. to 47. Going, into, uh, going into Cincinnati and Georgia State, Cincinnati defeated Georgia State 68 to 53. In the next bracket, Xavier won their first round matchup 102 to 83. They go on to play Florida State today. Uh, Florida State, Missouri defeated, Missouri lost to Florida State 67 to 54. Ohio State defeated South Dakota State 81 to 73. Gonzaga defeated UNC. Uh, Greenville, 68-64. to 64. Then Gonzaga went on to defeat Ohio State, 90-84. to 84. Houston advanced against San Diego State, 67-65. Uh, to 65. But then Michigan defeated 
Uh, Houston at the buzzer yesterday for a three-point win by Jordan Poole, a freshman. They went on to defeat uh, Houston 64-63. to Go back, look at the highlights. Um, because it's a YouTube video, I can't, you know, use anything that's not licensed to myself. But check out the game-winning three from Jordan Poole. The, the, uh, it's a thin line between the, uh, the heights of victory and the agony of defeat, I'm telling you, man. It's, it's, it's really disheartening for the losers because you know how much they put into it. But if you win the jubilation and, and the excitement from the fans and the coaching staff, it really goes to show you how uh, invigorating March Madness can be if you win. So, you know, go check out that highlight if you get a chance. And uh, North Carolina advances as well. First round, 84 to 66. Uh, Texas A&M defeated Providence in a heartbreaker, 73 to 69. And Michigan defeated Michigan defeated Montana before they went on to play Houston. Michigan defeated Montana 61 to 47. On the other side of the bracket, Villanova defeated Villanova defeated uh, Rafford 87 to 61. Alabama defeated Virginia Tech 86 to 83. Now, leading up to Saturday's matchup between Villanova and Alabama, I thought Alabama really had a chance. And in the first half, they did. Jordan Brunson uh, picked up two personal fouls, which really, ha- which really put uh, Coach Jay Wright in a precarious position. He had to um, sit down, Jalen Brunson. But Dante DiVincenzo put on a huge first half, shooting the lights out, scoring 15 points. And then in the second half, Mikael Bridges put on a shooting show for the ages, scoring 22 points, and he scored 15 points in a one minute and 40 second stretch of game time. So it just they just ratcheted it up. That's what great teams do. They ratcheted up their intensity and urgency, and they really put Alabama in a position where they really couldn't compete. Their phenom freshman Colin Sexton, in my opinion, one one of the best freshmen in the country, and the and in my opinion, the best point guard in the country, played exceptionally well this season. But when you play a a, a a well-oiled machine like Villanova, it's really hard to over, overcome that. Alabama, coached by Avery Johnson, one of the best uh, point guards in terms of one of the one of the highest IQ point guards, I should say, um, during his time. A great coach, not only at the NBA level, but obviously at the college level. Now, this particular season for him should propel him in terms of recruiting other players like Colin Sexton in the future and put Alabama in a position on the basketball side to make a little dent. They won't be Nick Saban in Alabama on the football side, but I think Avery could build a potentially prospering uh, prospering program. Alabama's out. Villanova will go on to face West Virginia. West Virginia was able to outlast Murray State. And that, was, that was good to see. Uh, Wichita, Wichita State lost to Marshall, 81 to 75. Florida defeated UCLA, 77-62. And then Florida went on to defeat Texas Tech, 66 to 6, 69 to 66. So Florida will go on to play in the Sweet 16. Then Butler defeated Arkansas, 79 to 62. Uh, Purdue defeated uh, Cal State Fullerton. Kansas defeated Penn State. Pennsylvania, uh, 76 to 60, and then Kansas went on to play Seton Hall. Seton Hall defeated NC State, 94 to 83, and it's good to see for on Seton Hall's side, Seton Hall was able to get their first NCAA win for that senior class: Kadeem Kennington, Andrew, Andrew Rodriguez, and uh, and Des- Desi Rodriguez. Excuse me. Um, to to see that senior class get a, a victory that was good to see. Unfortunately, they lost yesterday in a heartbreaker, 83 to 79 against Kansas. Now Kansas moves on to the Sweet 16, and they will potentially play whoever they'll they'll play Clemson. So that that's good to see. Clemson defeated uh, New Mexico State 79 to 68. 
Auburn defeated Ch Charleston 68-52. And Syracuse defeated uh, TCU. So that was good to see. 82-57. to Excuse me, 57. Excuse me, 52. 57 to 52. And then Michigan State defeated Bucknell. So Michigan State, Syracuse. That should be a good matchup. Two great coaches, Jim Beheim and Tom Izzo. And then Duke defeated uh, Rhode Island yesterday. And Rhode Island defeated Oklahoma on the first day. Now, I really think the NCAA uh, committee tried to set up a Trey Young versus Duke, uh, trying to make a run or try to try and scare a potential um, powerhouse, similar to what Steph Curry did during his time, especially in his sophomore year with uh, Davidson. But that's neither here nor there. Trey Young will probably and should uh, declare for the NCAA, for the NBA draft. There'll probably be a lottery pick now. After the new year, Oklahoma didn't fare too well, specifically on the road. They didn't win a road game the, the entire 2018 part of the NCAA season. So they didn't, they didn't really improve his stock necessarily. But I think because of his shooting prowess, him being a small guard and, and having the ability to uh, shoot the way that Steph did at the college level, will it translate to the NBA level? That remains to be seen. But I think because of what Steph has done and how he's transcended the game as a shooter, the ability of Trey Young will be coveted by a lot of different teams. So let's see where he falls in the NBA draft. Today will be the, the final cuts for the round of six, uh, 32, and teams will advance to Sweet 16. Next week, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it, how it falls. But this just goes to show you that March is completely for the madness. The brackets don't matter in terms of how the seating falls. All that matters is that we enjoy as fans and the NCAA wins always, monetarily at least. This is Isaiah Rhodes. This is Ask Isaiah. We will be back with more NCAA tournament coverage. And I'll be sure to get in some, uh, women's, some of the women's side as well. Because what UConn did yesterday was out of this world, 140 to 52 in their first, in their first round game. So Gino Oriyama continue to dominate. But if you're any other teams, just learn from Mississippi State last year. Anyone can be beat. Remember that. In March, anyone can be beat. This is Ask Isaiah. Isaiah Rhodes will be back soon.